All right, welcome back to the No Quarter Given podcast, the Thanksgiving edition of the No Quarter Given podcast. We want to be, Peter and I want to be the first to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. If you're listening to this after Thursday, then hope you had a nice Thanksgiving and hopefully the trip to fan didn't take too much effect for you. Hopefully and, uh, it did a little bit. It's always good, Jason Powers, to uh, you know sit around the TV, eat as much food, especially turkey, mashed potatoes, and gravy. You better have that mashed potatoes and gravy, by the way. We got a story about that later on, uh, but it's okay because the great thing about Thanksgiving, you got football, you got eating, you got sleeping. I mean, what's better <laughs> than that? And you don't even have to do it in that order. Take a nice nap in the afternoon at some point, either before yeah. or after dinner. Yes. I mean, all right, people, Peter. Yeah. Let's tell the audience what are your what are your Thanksgiving plans this year? Mom cooking or what are you doing? Yeah, I'm gonna definitely enjoy uh, mom's cooking. I'm gonna uh, it's gonna be the 44th consecutive year of me cooking absolutely nothing on Thanksgiving. Uh, I like to thank the Academy for that because if I try to cook turkey or anything else, heck, I could burn a grilled cheese. Air fryers save lives. You can't make a turkey in the air fryer, so. And that uh, way I'm going to be uh, sitting by my TV watching all these great football games, hopefully. And if they're not great, then the great thing is you can fall asleep. <laughs> Are you at least going to Publix and buying a nice a no. nice pie or a cobbler of some sort, bring a little dessert, maybe you go buy mom some flowers? Sure, buy mom flowers, you know, give her a pat on the back, tell her I love her. Thank you very much for cooking uh, once again this year. We're in, settled in the new apartment in holiday, but I'm going to – Probably do absolutely nothing like I always do on Thanksgiving. At least clean up the table for mom. Don't make mom do the right, dishes. Do the dishes. Well, you got to get, you know, paper plates. That's what you got to do. Oh, really? Come on, Peter get, Blake. Well, here's the thing. You got to get paper plates. And there was actually one year Please. where I had to travel to Gainesville to get my uncle on Thanksgiving. Now, I love my uncle to death, Uncle D, Uncle Dwayne out there. Love him. Big time Gator fan, big time Bucks fan, whatever else. Eight hours on Thanksgiving. Never again. Traffic was dreadful. I didn't get a chance to watch any football. And I ate late, like 6 o'clock at night. Never again. Never. A lot of traffic on Thanksgiving. So be careful on the roads. Yeah. In, in all seriousness, Especially be careful on the roads. Yeah. Gainesville, no. That's not, the, that's not the place to go on Thanksgiving. Everybody's going there. So, no. Not... Not the best idea. Two brutal travel days are the Thanksgiving day and then the Sunday after Thanksgiving when everybody's trying to get home. Right. Whether you're whether you're on the interstate or in the airports, very busy travel days, especially people you know up and down seventy five here in the state of Florida and ninety five. So uh, he, I had to go get him because he's my uncle. He didn't have nobody to spend Thanksgiving with. You know that's how family works. Sometimes. There you go. That's that's and, being a good relative. There you go. Uh, being a good uh, being a good nephew, yep. uh, but yeah, it cost me the whole day. Never again. Yep. Well, I'll be I'll be eating at my mom's house. So mom hey. mom is cooking. Um, I rotate my mother and father. You know, we rotate venues every year. So uh, I'll be at my mother's this year, and uh, you know, mom mom always does a great job cooking, and my sister contributes a little bit and you know i try to help wherever i wherever i'm needed i, I offer to bring stuff peter i right. offer to bring some dessert or whatever but uh again, i I'm feel like you. it'll be that year if i try to offer to bring something that i'll poison somebody or somebody will get sick and go to the hospital so why even mess with that rotation if you will <laughs> I, I know my job i know my place my my place is in on my couch watching football We'll have a triple header to watch. You got yes. Detroit Buffalo early. You got Dallas and the Giants at four four thirty, and then the night game, which is pretty interesting. You got the Patriots going to Minnesota. So a full day of football for all the all the all you fans out there. Uh, you know, I'm sure the, the, you know some of us will watch it all day. Some some will be in and out and all that. All right, let's talk about some Buck history on Thanksgiving. Sure. Only been one occasion where the Buccaneers have had the privilege to play on Thanksgiving. Kind of surprised the Bucks have never played Detroit on Thanksgiving with them being used to be rivals in the division, but that's never happened. The only time was 2006. The Bucks went to Dallas. They score on their opening drive, and then Tony Romo and company decide they want to have a Thanksgiving feast on the Buccaneer defense, 38-10 final. Never forget it. I was looking forward to the Bucks playing that day, but of course, because uh, you, as a kid, you want to see your team play on Thanksgiving, and they never get a chance. And then finally, when they get a chance, 
in true Buccaneer fashion, they absolutely are horrendous that day. It was one of the worst Thanksgiving games of all time, one of the worst Thanksgiving for me uh, because you just couldn't get that taste out of your mouth. First touchdown, and then after that, it was completely downhill. Turned the game off. think I fell asleep forever. Didn't even want to watch the highlights because there was no highlights besides the first try. Tony Romo, five touchdowns, two of those to the venerable Terry Glenn back in the day, and then Marion Barber, who just passed away here in the last in this last six six months or so, he ran for two scores as well. So full beat down by the Cowboys. He didn't actually run. Tony Romo threw five touchdowns, so t- he threw two of them to to Barber. Uh, but but a full beat down by Tony Romo and the in the Cowboys in the Bucks lone Thanksgiving appearance. Give me another memory. You got any memories from Thanksgiving? Just watching games in general. Give me a Thanksgiving memory from from the. From the year over the years, Peter Blake. Now, was it was it Miami and Dallas? Was that during yeah. Thanksgiving and the snow? I remember that game. That was probably a classic game. Leon Lett. Yes, doing Leon Lett things because that's what Leon Lett did uh, that year, especially versus the Buffalo Bills. You know, sticking the ball out, getting the ball knocked away from Don Beebe in the Super Bowl, but that's the one I remember. This was Pete Pete Stojanovich of the Dolphins. Yes. Was kicking a game-winning field goal with about 10, 15 seconds left in the game, blocked by Dallas. The ball trickles down to the five, six-yard line, whatever it is, and Leon Lett decides he wants to go try to scoop it up in this. Remember, it was a snow game, too. A rare snow game in Dallas, of all places. Right. Tries to scoop it up, slip slides. The Dolphins recover, and then the Dolphins get to kick another field goal the next play and kick it. And Stojanovic makes it, and the Dolphins steal the game late in Miami, the famous Leon Lent snow game in Dallas. Yeah, and I think always, you know, those games, especially the early ones with the Lions, are not always the best because it was either Chicago or a bad team, and the Lions are a bad team. But having John Madden announce yep. that summer all was classic. And then having my father there, and it, I kind of get emotional during this time because it's been five years since he's passed away. Yep. But that was the one thing we looked forward to. You know, he wasn't a cook. I wasn't a cook, but we were both sports fans, and you knew that he was going to be there, and I was going to be there on Thanksgiving. So him not being there the last five years has been kind of tough. But that's what I always remember about Thanksgiving, especially when football was on, no matter if we're eating or not. We're definitely sitting down watching football and talking about it before it happens. Yeah, I remember a couple couple memories. Long one of these was a long time ago, like 1983, 84. Oh. Lawrence Taylor in his prime intercepted a ball, went about 90 yards interception against Detroit to kind of win the game there late in Detroit when he was with the Giants. And I'll tell you a good story about last year. So I'm in a survivor pool last year, right? Mm-hmm. And there's about eight people left, and we're vying for like. Four or five thousand dollars are in this pool. Is in this pool. Mm-hmm. Everybody, everybody in the pool. We and, and at this point, there's seven or eight people left. So what we decide to do is we decide to split two thousand dollars amongst the eight people, and then play for the other three thousand. Right. Right. So we each get a little chunk of that two thousand going into Thanksgiving week. So we all make a couple hundred bucks, whatever. What end up at two fifty? I think it was. Going into Thanksgiving, but we're playing for the other three thousand, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody but me last year picks the Cowboys over the Raiders. And what happened last year? The Raiders go into Dallas and beat the Cowboys when the Cowboys were really good and they were supposed to win. D- Derek Carr and company go to Dallas, beat the Cowboys on Thanksgiving. So all I have to do. To collect the other three thousand is pick a winner you, in, in our survivor pool. You can pick any game you want every week. Right. So I pick a game on Sunday with the Ravens. If the Ravens win, I win the three grand because everybody else is eliminated. The Ravens get it done on Sunday. Your boy collects three grand on Thanksgiving last week, courtesy <laughs> thanks of the Dallas Cowboys on Thanksgiving Day, baby. Beautiful. I need that three thousand dollars right now to pay off this uh, albatross of uh, a deal that I got with this laptop. Even though it, it's it's definitely worth it, but that's the kind of money I'll give you. A bad story. Uh, I was hyping up my mom and her mashed potatoes and gravy. Well, it just so happened she decided, you know what? I'm not going to make you gravy. 
Okay. All right, mom. I'm going to go on my radio show and not only talk about it for five minutes, but do an entire segment on not getting mashed potatoes and gravy. I kid you not. My mom is listening to the whole time. When I got off, I swear, first and foremost, she wanted to kill me. She was mad at me for at least a day. And then after that, there was never, ever, ever a time where I wasn't going to get mashed potatoes and gravy because I went on my radio show and absolutely <laughs> destroyed my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't ever, don't spread family secrets, man. To the public oh, airwaves. You can't, ma- you can't mess up the Thanksgiving dinner with no mashed potatoes and gravy. We just can't do that. you got to have the gravy with the mashed potatoes. Well, what are we talking about here? You can't do that. That's Thanksgiving. That's a tradition. I'm looking forward to it. All right. You're listening to the No Quarter Given Podcast, part of the BuckPower.com Podcast Network. Again, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Before we get to Paul Stewart's montage on the Cleveland Browns, Let's talk about a couple of nuggets from the from the Buccaneers. Obviously, the Bucs were on a bye week last week, heading to Cleveland. We're going to do the preview of Cleveland post montage with Paul. Remember, you can go to the Buck Power TV YouTube channel if you want to see the video version of Paul's montage. If you don't enjoy it, audio, you're going to hear the audio version here. But if you want to see Paul sit down and do the video version, go to Buck Power TV on YouTube and check that out. You can also go to the Jason Powers Sports Channel on YouTube and see our interview and this podcast, the, the podcast interview as well for No Quarter Given as well. So a um, couple interesting nuggets came out of, of, of one buck place today or this week. Mm-hmm. The Glazers are now open to selling Manchester United. Did you see that nugget? Mm, I did see that. I also saw where uh, Cristiano Ronaldo terminated. Still, terminated. From Done. That. So... The 37-year-old soccer player who, of course, uh, you know, at the time during the offseason was, you know, seen with Tom Brady talking. Yep, yep. Asking Tom Brady straight out, are you coming back or not? And you can hear Brady go, mm, maybe, you know, but like in that doubt at that point. And then, of course, the very next night at 720, Tom Brady announces that he is coming back. Who knows what that meeting was all about with the Glazers? I still believe they had some type of meeting. Uh, but yeah, I'm surprised by that. And I wonder what that's well, going to lead to at this juncture. You, I would, I would be shocked if they don't sell at this book. Cause usually one, when that, when that word gets leaked out that we're considering selling, that means they've already got the feelers out to some people that want to buy. And obviously there's been a, a love hate relationship with the Glazers and man United over in England, for sure. With the way they've run the Manchester United the last, you know, eight or 10 years or so, but you know, usually when that word leaks out that they're considering selling, that's usually a pretty good, pretty good feeling that's going to happen here. I would expect that to happen the next, you know, three months, three to six months at the latest, I would think. So uh, Do you think interesting. That's a good thing for the Bucks at this juncture, because now a lot of people said they couldn't focus on it. I thought they did a fine job with Manchester United and the Bucks focusing on it and spending money. But now with the selling of Manchester United, can they Who knows? totally focus on the Bucks? Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? I don't I mean, I don't think their I don't think their attention was any less or more with the with having both, to be honest with you. I right. think the Bucks have had plenty of money to spend on stuff the last several years and they've been very open about spending money and I don't think that's been it. Who knows? They they might be at the stage of their their life. You know, the Glazer boy brothers may be at the stage, and the, and the sisters involved, Darcy. They just may be in the stage. They just want to worry about one entity, one business. They have to worry about who know. Yeah, you, know, you know, the Bucks are probably worth hell if they if they decide to want to sell the Bucks. The Bucks would be worth easily four to five billion with a B dollars. I Easy. mean, with all I mean, so and they just may be at the stage of their life where they just who knows? They may they may just want to just post the rest of the way with the bucks and whenever they decide to sell the bucks, however they, if they end up ever decide to sell it, who knows, but yeah, you know, but just interesting nugget that that came out this, you know, this week with that, with that going. So, and obviously with the world cup starting, Ronaldo had some very harsh things to say about the, the coach at man United in the last week or so in an interview he did. So that was inevitable. That was going to happen with Ronaldo. He, He he's, he's kind of a diva, you know, he's kind of a tool diva douchebag, you know, when it comes to dealing with, I mean, he is, I hate to say it, you know, he is, he's at the end of the line here. He's in the world cup this year, you know, the world cup starting. He's a, he's a 
social media, excuse my French whore. He likes to, I mean, he, he likes to be in the news one way or the other. So, well, he's in the news. That's for sure. But uh, yeah. So, um, all right, we're going to go to Paul Stewart. Let him do his montage again, audio version, montage, Cleveland Browns history with the Browns. So enjoy the montage. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes after the montage and we will preview this week's week, week 12 matchup in Cleveland with the Cleveland Browns. We'll be back in just a minute on the No Quarter Given Podcast, part of the BuckPower.com Podcast Network. All right, welcome back, Buck fans. No Quarter Given Podcast. Jason along with Peter. Hopefully you enjoyed the, the montage with Paul Stewart. Again, go to buckpower.com. You can also go to buckpower.com to get our podcast as well. Paul posts the podcast on his on the buckpower.com website. All things Buccaneers, history, Thanksgiving Day, stats, rosters, anything you need buck buck related over the over the course of the franchise history, buckpower.com is the place to go. He posted a couple of cool pictures when he was in in Tampa a couple of weeks back with Peter and I and TJ out to dinner. He's got a good picture of all of us on the BuckPower.com site, so you can actually see what we look like if you don't think we uh, if you've never seen us before. Right. But again, yeah, we both got we both got faces for TV now. We we got good we got decent faces now. Uh, yeah, no, nah, absolutely, sure we do. Sure we do. All right, let's get to the Cleveland Browns. Bucks coming to Cleveland five and five. The Browns three and seven. A couple things: uh, Cleveland loses last week in uh, they played in Detroit against Buffalo. Remember, they were part of that snow out situation with the Bills, so they played in Detroit last week. The Bucks obviously were off last week. Um, this we, the Bucks catch a little bit of a break. Last game of the Deshaun Watson suspension, so you'll see Jacoby Brissett once again. Uh, a couple things about Cleveland. Good, really good running game. If you've not followed Cleveland, Nick Chubb is a stud running back. Kareem Hunt's a good player. Amari Cooper's having a really good year at wide receiver. So again, the Bucks have to be alert there on defense. The Buck or the Cleveland with uh, Miles Garrett, a premier pass rusher. That again, Donovan Smith, Tristan Wirfs, and company will have to deal with as well. Your overall thoughts of just going into Week Twelve here, Bucks five and five. Certainly a winnable game, right? I mean, you're coming off a momentum uh, shift there. You beat Seattle and Germany. You've won two in a row against the Rams and once again the Seahawks. So at the end of the day, you got to start stacking these wins. And this is certainly a winnable one versus a Browns team that coming into the year had lots of expectations because of the Deshaun Watson situation. So that necessarily hasn't played out, if you will. Uh, They still have one of the best running backs in the league in a Nick Chubb. They can't stop the run, so I think this is kind of where the match of uh, metal meets the the road, if you will, and and we'll see if the Bucks can take advantage of that. And it looks like Leonard Fournette's not going to miss any time with the hip pointer, but I'd still like to see Rashard White capitalize off of that hundred yard game versus the Seahawks. Hopefully, you see more of him, especially if Lenny isn't as effective uh, as he's been here uh, the last couple of weeks because he's been very ineffective. So hopefully, White, uh, you see more carries out of him. Interesting. I just looked up the weather forecast for Sunday in Cleveland. High of 49, low of 38, 80% chance of rain. So back to your point about the running game, mm-hmm. the Bucks got it ramped up in in, in uh, Munich. You could see a lot of, you know, if, it, if it's a wet, nasty day in Cleveland, wind, rain, 80% chance it could be one of those kind of games with the running game, a Chubb, Hunt, White and Leonard Fournette could be the focal points here. Again, I hate to say that. That probably that favors Cleveland a little bit more. You'd love the track to be a, a dry track where the Bucs can, you know, throw the ball around. But if it's not, interesting situation with the weather in Cleveland Sunday. Yeah, and the biggest concern, of course, is Miles Garrett, who could be one of the best defensive players in this league, especially at his age. And there already seems like there's dissension in the ranks, if you will, especially in that locker room with Garrett saying in so many words, you know, wasting some of the players prime and then the coach not agreeing with it and calling Garrett out and saying, Hey, we need to have a talk. This is already going on. So this is a team right now that you should beat. You should have beat the Panthers. You should have beat the Steelers. Don't make the mistake again. 
of, uh, you know, basically looking past the Cleveland Browns. They need a win, but right now they're in a tailspin and it's going on a downward trend. This is what you need to do is take advantage and win this game. Yeah, I mean, Buffalo opened the game up. I mean, they was methodical last week, and they just, you know, they just kept pouring it on. The defense is not great in Cleveland, I don't think. If you can block, if you can block Garrett, to me, that's the key to the game in the passing game. And obviously, depending on what the weather's like, we'll see what the running attack looks like. But again, will it be interesting to see from a Bucks perspective? Is Luke Gedeke back? And if he is, is he in the lineup, or do you, you oh. stick with do you stick with Nick Lever? What do you what do you do there? Do you stick with Nick Leverett? Stick, stick with Nick Leverett. You want to go with a rotation, fine. But uh, Gedeke has definitely struggled this year. You're in a better situation with Leverett. Uh, of course, you know, Donovan Smith is going to have his hands full. That interior line is going to have their hands full. So I want all hands on deck, if you will. And you got to have the best offensive lineman. And for me, Nick Leverett should start at left guard and continue to start at left guard because they're starting Jason Powers to put together some chemistry furthermore you look at the off offensive side of the ball is this where chris godwin once again continues to get healthy is this where julio jones continues to get healthy and they make an impact on this offense when tom brady wants to throw the ball down the field so i think there's some definitely interesting matchups and some matchups that clearly favor the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the Sunday. good thing is you're going to get as fresh of a Bucks team as you're going to get here in this game. They've had, a, you know, two weeks off, you know, after the London game, that seems like they get, came out of the, I'm sorry, Munich game, pretty unscathed injury-wise. It looks like Fournette's going to be okay. But again, Julio with two weeks off, Godwin with two more weeks to get ready uh, physically and keep, get that knee in decent shape. You're probably getting back. I mean, again, ha Akeem Hicks. Got two weeks to get, again, fully amped up and ready to go. So I like where they are physically coming into this game, coming off the bye week. And again, two years ago, we remember, seven and five going into the bye week, and then they had that late season surge that led them all the way to the Super Bowl. Hopefully this is a similar situation where you can get some momentum. You've won two in a row. You've got some good feelings. You've got the running game going a little bit. This is where you got to build stack, stack wins on top of each other. Yeah, and again, you know, not to look too much ahead, but you got the Saints here in a couple of weeks. Uh, they're in a tailspin. Once again, they're in a downturn, if you will. Yep. Uh, and you got the Rams, who basically their season's over with. So if you can run the table, get to the playoffs, you don't have to worry about the Rams. You don't have to necessarily worry about the Saints at this juncture. And, and I feel like it's it's setting up for the Bucs. But again, the Bucs have to take care of their business. And the key matchup for me, as it always goes back to, is stopping that run game and, one of the best running backs in the National Football League, if not the best running back in the league, and that would be Nick Chubb, and that's going to be a major challenge. But uh, you talk to a lot of Browns fans, they feel like they don't run the ball enough, much like what Tampa Bay does. They don't run the ball enough. They try to pass the ball with Brissett, who, who's ever at the controls. So, again, you know, they're going to try to run the ball. If they're not going to try to run the ball, then you got to stop the pass. But at the end of the day, for me, the key matchup is to – stop Nick Chubb and that running game if you do that you make them one-dimensional and that puts the onus on Jacoby Brissett and I think you're pretty good at that situation and a couple things to be aware of with Cleveland they like to go for it a lot on fourth down Stefanski likes to go he doesn't he, he he's done a poor job in my opinion at times when he should have kicked field goals that he hasn't has gone for it on the, around the inside the 10-yard line kind of stuff so Stefanski is not afraid to, to roll the dice even if it's a little bit reckless, I think with yeah. the analytics. So don't be don't be surprised you see the Cleveland go for it again. Last game of the of the Brissett era here. Uh, Watson's back next, the following week in going to Houston. So again, we'll it'd be interesting to see what the what the mood of that of that roster is with the last game of Jacoby Brissett, who's done okay, but he's not he's not potentially Desha what Deshaun Watson could be when he's in his prime. Yeah, he's not going to win any games, and at the end of the day, this is a must-win game for the Browns. I mean, they're three and seven. If you win here, you're four and seven. Then they're you're cooked. actually still in the hunt, which is crazy in itself because we're talking about the Colts. They're still in the hunt, being four, six, and one. And uh, there was a story out there. There's a fan that broke into the stadium. No word if it's Baker Mayfield or not. Who, by the way, just got benched for Sam Darnold in Carolina. Yeah. 
Well, me, I mean, I got you. Again, to me, it's a big two game stretch for the Bucks. You got Cleveland, New Orleans, Monday Night Football with New Orleans. After New Orleans, you go to San Francisco and you got the Bengals. So you're probably not going to win both those games. You hope so, but if you can in, in a in a perfect world split there, San Francisco and Cincinnati, that's why these two games are important. If you can go four in a row going to San Francisco. Don't be surprised also if that game doesn't get flexed to a Sunday night because there's some bad Sunday night matchups coming up on on uh, NBC. So the Bucs are, are, and 49ers could be a flex option on Sunday night football in San Francisco, which would be a huge matchup if the Bucs come in there with a four-game winning streak. And I still think that's a winnable game because you got Jimmy G. You could shut down that running game with Christian McCaffrey. We know they're good them. though. You they're gotta good. admit they're they're, they're bully. Good. They got a really good defense yep. and they got some weapons now. They're very good. The San Francisco is one of those teams that you definitely want to watch out for. So, and then you talk about Cincinnati. Uh, you, to me, that's a winnable game, but you still have to deal with Joe Burrow. Yep. At that point, Chase could play this weekend. You know, what's his status of that game? He may be back by then. That makes that offense even more dynamic. And of course, again, we talk about the offensive line giving up so <laughs> many sacks. So that's a matchup that you have to look out for too, but very you know, very interesting matchups here coming up in the next couple of weeks, some challenges, but it starts in Cleveland on Sunday and it starts with shutting down that run game, especially Nick Chubb. And again, if you're the Bucks, again, remember uh, Peter and I and Paul Stewart did a midseason report last week. So if you missed last week's episode, go back, check it out. We did a full in-depth roster breakdown, midseason report, offense, defense, special teams, rookies, coaching. So if you missed last week, go back, check out last week's episode. Uh, again, if you want a break, really good breakdown of what we what we talked about, I think if the Bucks can go five and two, the last seven, they'll be in great shape. Potentially could be a three seed in the NFC with Minnesota losing. You got the the you know you got Phil again. The Bucks and 49ers are probably battling for that three and four seed. You may not catch Minnesota, but t- the South and the West division winners, one of those two will probably be the three seed. I think that Bucks 49er game could go a long way to determining who's the three seed. And again. If you're the three seed, you get a home game, obviously, but you get a better matchup in that first round than if you're the four seed. Absolutely. And even if you get that fourth seed, you're going to play the Cowboys and you're going to have a or home Philly. Game you it's probably Dallas game. or Philly. Dallas or Philly. So, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you're still in pretty good shape. But once again, you got to take care of your business. I think they win six games. I think they win 11 overall go uh, 11 and six they only lose one and that's probably to who we talked about san francisco everybody else i think is a winnable game even cincinnati i agree yeah. oh yeah it's, and that's a home game the cincinnati game's here so yeah. that's a, definitely a winnable game and and, and, and such they've so. taken a step back they really have and it, it hasn't helped with losing chase to an injury losing mix in the other night to a concussion but the yep. offensive line our old friend alex kappa you know not necessarily getting it done for that right. line because they've given up way too many sacks and once again, you give up that many sacks with Joe Burrow back there at the controls. I think there's going to be some bad stuff that could happen, and maybe that happens in the Tampa Bay game. I got you. All right, give me a, give me a score prediction, Peter Blake. I am going to go 27-13 Tampa Bay over Cleveland. Again, Sunday, 1 o'clock. Yeah, I believe it's a 1 o'clock kickoff in Cleveland. Uh, again, nasty weather is, is, is in the forecast. A lot of rain, chilly, cold. Uh, it was a little bit chilly in Munich, so maybe they're used to that. So that's a good thing. Um, again, but but again, this could be a game, a running game. And again, what I want to see out of the Buccaneers last half of the season, especially on offense, catch the ball. Too, way too many drops the first half of the year going into the bye week. I want to see the. I want to see our our receiving core, who we who we believe is top two or three in the league, start playing like that and be more consistent. And tell your boy Scotty Miller stop jumping, okay? No I'll, I'll jumping. Tell him, you tell uh, tell your boy Jalen Darden to stop running out of bounds. <laughs> that's your boy. No, that's your boy. That's your boy. I'll take Scotty. You take Jalen Darden. All right. How about that? <laughs> I got you. All right. I'm going Bucks 20. I'm going to go 31, 31, 17 Bucks. Like it. All right, a little higher scoring. Don't be surprised if the defense gets involved here with maybe a defensive score. Uh, again, nasty weather, the pass rush. Brissett's not afraid to throw some interceptions hitting now and again. And again, we talked about in the midseason report. We need some more turnover production out of the Buccaneer defense. Let's get some turnovers. Much better effort the last couple of weeks. 
Devin White's playing much better. You got Antoine Winfield back in the mix. Pretty healthy on defense. Let's let's get a defensive score this week. How about that? Yeah, sounds good. You got a defensive turnover last week, so we'll see if uh, this defense can capitalize on that. All right, Buck fans, have have the happy Thanksgiving. Tell Peter to clean the dishes for mom. I'll be at mom's. Don't be compl- <laughs> don't compl- anything mom cooks. Don't complain. I, I don't care if it's burnt. The, if the if the gravy's terrible, never Cajun complain style. about mom when she's cooking. <laughs> Only if you don't give me gravy and mashed potatoes, mom. Just saying. <laughs> Love you out there. Of course, she's probably listening to this uh, podcast. All right, Buck fans, we'll see you next week. We got the – who we got next week? We got the New Orleans Saints, a Monday nighter. Yes. They, it, again, I don't think this will happen, but if, if New Orleans doesn't play well, maybe there's a Jameis Winston sighting mm-hmm. in Tampa on Monday night. Maybe. Maybe. You never know. You never know. All right, Buck fans, let's get victory number three in a row in Cleveland. Shout out to TJ Reeves, Gene Deckerhoff, Dave Moore. Have a great broadcast. Shout out to Paul Stewart in England, buckpower.com and Peter Blake. Let's get let's get victory win number six to yeah, stay atop the NFC South, my man. Yes, sir. Let's do it. Here we go, Bucks. Let's go. Oh. See you next week, Buck fans.